Blog Talk Radio. Hello, my name is Elder Price, and I would like to share with you the most amazing book. Hello, my name is Elder Grant. It's a book about America a long, long time ago. It has so many awesome parts. You simply won't believe how much this book can change your life. Hello, my name is Elder Green. I would like to share with you this book of Jesus Christ. Hello, my name is Elder Young. Hello, did you know that Jesus lived here in the USA? You can read all about it now. Hello, in this empty book, it's free. No, you don't have to pay. Hello, hello, my name is Elder Smith. Hello, my name is Doug Bundy, formerly known as Elder Bundy when I too was a young Mormon missionary ringing doorbells out there a long time ago. But this is Voices from the Dust Radio for Monday, the second day of December 2013. We welcome you to our show where we share the reason for the hope within us, the reason why the Latter-day Saints are Christians, and the reason why you should be too. Well, we're starting a brand new week as well as a brand new month today, and uh, I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving day and has survived Black Friday all right. Uh, on today's program, we continue our recital of the 15 articles of our on our website, VoicesFromTheDust.org, with article number 13 entitled The Gathering. It's located in the list of articles under the menu item The Witness of Joseph on our website. Just go there to voicesfromthedust.org and click on the menu item, The Witness of Joseph, and then select The Gathering from the drop-down menu of articles listed there. So you can uh, also find a partial list of past episodes of the program uh, that you can listen to on the radio page of the website by clicking the radio quote-unquote menu item on the website. Or for a complete list of all our past episodes, follow the link on that page to uh, blogtalkradio.com or just go there in your browser and search, uh, do a search for Voices from the Dust Radio on their website and our, our program will come up. You can also find them uh, uh, as videos on our YouTube channel, Voices from the Dust. Okay, well, this doctrine of the literal gathering of the house of Israel as declared by the voices from the dust found in the Book of Mormon and in the Articles of Faith of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is what distinguishes the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ declared by the LDS missionaries every day in all parts of the world from the gospel as preached by the non-LDS Christian world, which is also out there in all the world. This is a big part of the reason why, as we have seen repeatedly during the course of our radio programs, that the angel declared to Nephi, a prophet of the Book of Mormon, that there are saved two churches only when it comes down to it. One of these is the great and abominable church, the whore of all the earth, and the other is the church of the Lamb of God. The day is coming said the angel, and will soon be here that whosoever does not belong to the church of the Lamb belongs to the other church which gathers multitudes upon all the face of the earth to fight against the Lamb. However, the Lord has promised to preserve his people and has declared that the great pit which has been dug for the destruction of mankind shall be filled by those who dug it. But as they say... The devil is hidden in the details. So let's begin reading uh, some of those details from the text of the article to see how this is to come about. The testimony of Amos in the Old Testament was, Surely the uh, the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. When he set his hand the first time to recover his people from the Egyptians, he revealed his secret to the servants, to his servants, the prophets, Moses, Aaron, and their brethren. When he visited his people with judgment for their iniquities, he revealed his secret to, to his servants, the prophets, Jeremiah, Zephaniah, and their brethren. Now that he has set his hand again the second time, 
which will be the last time to gather his people from Egypt, quote unquote, he will or he has revealed his secret to his servants, the prophets. Joseph Smith, Oliver Cowdery, and their brethren are these prophets in the modern days and Brigham Young and so on. And of course the twelve apostles that are always uh, mem- uh guiding guiding and directing the church. Of course, there are many other prophets for the work of the Lord is is many faceted, but in terms of the scattering and gathering of his covenant people, the house of Israel, these are the prophets that were his servants to the people involved at the time. In the case of Moses, Aaron, his brother, was his spokesman, and the two of them worked together to extract the house of Jacob, Israel, from under the Egyptian rule. In the, in the case of their subsequent captivity, Jeremiah and his contemporary Zephaniah didn't need to have spokesmen for uh, they weren't leading the people out of captivity but warning the wicked that they were about to go down into captivity and announcing their impending doom for having forsaken their God. However, in the case of Joseph Smith, the Lord once again is setting his hand to deliver his people from their captivity and he compares uh Moses I mean uh, the Lord compares Joseph to Moses and says that he would prepare a spokesman for him as he did for Moses now Joseph Smith's literal brother Hiram was always with him in his ministry but he he wasn't Joseph's spokesman uh to the house of Israel uh to understand what is going on here we have to understand that the role of Moses and Aaron in the Lord's dramatic delivery of the ancient people of Israel from the captivity of the Egyptians was a type and shadow of things to come in the latter days when the Lord would set his hand again the second time to deliver his people from spiritual Egypt, quote-unquote. Now remember there were two parts of that. I'll just take an aside here for a minute. There was the the beginning of that when Joseph delivered the word of God or the bread uh, during the famine uh, to uh, to the house of Israel and thereby was their savior because he had ascended uh, to very great prominence in the in Egypt and was able to do that. But then later they were they were uh, uh, held in captivity and it was Moses that delivered them. And uh, so there was that two part of that type and shadow of things to come, the the uh, entry into Egypt and where they were saved, and then the exit out of Egypt where they had to uh, be taken out of captivity uh, that they had fallen into in Egypt. Okay, so <clears throat> with that, we'll begin the text, reading the text again. Uh, Joseph of old, who was sold into Egypt by his brethren, eventually rose to a position of prominence and authority in that kingdom from which he was able to save the house of Israel in the days of famine. He had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, both of whom represented Joseph's inheritance in the house of Israel. Because, recall, he received a double portion inheritance. He received his own inheritance and also that of the birthright belonging to Reuben. Reuben was the firstborn of Jacob and therefore the rightful heir of everything, but he lost this birthright for defiling his father's bed. And so his portion was given to Joseph as uh, part uh, recompense for uh, Joseph's unjust sentence to slavery given him by his brethren who were jealous of his father's conspicuous love for him and his mother Rachel, and who were angry at the implications of the strange dreams that he shared with them in his innocence. But the Old Testament records how prophetic those dreams were because Joseph truly did become a royal ruler before whom both his parents and his brethren bowed themselves just as the dreams in his youth indicated would be the case. Today, it is widely acknowledged that the life of Joseph of old who became A temporal savior to his father's house is a type and shadow of the life of Jesus, the eternal savior of mankind. However, what is now coming to light is that the life of Joseph of old, the descendants of his two sons, 
uh, and the descendants of his two sons Ephraim and Manasseh are also a type and shadow of of Egypt-like events. But these events are set in America in the latter days. That is to say, Joseph and the Egyptian drama that played out in the ancient days are a type and shadow of an American drama now playing out in the latter days. To understand this, we must it must be recognized that many of the descendants of Ephraim, the fruit of the loins of Joseph, are today identified with the Gentiles and now stand at the head or hold the keys to the dispensation of bread, quote-unquote, or the word of God for the house of Israel, since it is Ephraim who was given the birthright. Recall that Ephraim's father, Joseph, was taken into Egypt, but was delivered by the power of God and rose to a position of prominence and authority in Egypt, just as the Joseph of the Latter-day Saints, mostly descendants of Joseph through Ephraim, are rising now to positions of prominence and authority in their modern nation of Egypt, quote-unquote, which is the United States of America. But when the pharaoh of Egypt, who favored Joseph of old, died, his successor persecuted and enslaved the people of Joseph, and God delivered them by the hand of Moses, whom we all know as one mighty and strong, with exceeding faith, to work mighty wonders, and to do that thing which was great in the sight of God, unto the redemption of the house of Israel in the days of old. But what is more, in these last days, Joseph, is once again the means of temporal salvation for his father's father Israel's house, and once again feeding and saving them from a famine, but this time it's a famine of the hearing of the word of God rather than of bread and water, which is on a parallel with what Joseph of old did when he was the means of saving the house of Israel from the famine of physical bread as recorded in the Bible. However, even though the ancients were saved from the famine of bread by the hand of the Lord through Joseph in ancient Egypt, they eventually became slaves to the Egyptians, as we've already mentioned. In like manner, the descendants of the ancients who have been scattered throughout the world and are now being gathered under Joseph through the descendants of Ephraim, who have been instruments in the hands of God in saving the house of Israel from the famine of the word of God in these latter days, are in danger of being enslaved and probably will be enslaved by the spiritual Egypt in uh, due course. So uh, the complicated details of this modern drama, as it was foreshadowed in ancient times, was taught by Lehi, a direct descendant of Joseph through Manasseh to his son Joseph, as recorded in the Book of Mormon anciently. The characters of Joseph and his descendants, Moses and his... uh, Brethren, his brother Aaron, the house of Israel in Egypt, and and the difference between the power and role of the spoken and written word of God are all woven into an astonishing prophecy of ancient types and shadows set to be fulfilled in the modern context of America, and the uh, intent that it, to the intent or with the intent that it might help us understand the marvelous work and wonder of Jehovah, his work, his strange work, and his act, his strange act, in turning the things of the world upside down by voices speaking from the dust and the weak things of the world coming forth to break down the mighty and the strong and that uh, man might learn not to counsel his fellow man, uh, neither trust in the arm of flesh, but that every man might speak in the name of the Lord, and even the Savior of the world. And now I speak unto you, Joseph, my last born. Thou wast born in the wilderness of mine afflictions. Yea, in the days of my greatest sorrow did thy mother bear thee. And may the Lord consecrate also unto thee this land, which is a most precious land, for thine inheritance and the inheritance of thy seed with thy brethren, for thy security forever, if it so be that ye shall keep the commandments of the Holy One of Israel. And now, Joseph, my last born, whom I have brought out of the wilderness of mine afflictions, may the Lord bless thee forever, for thy seed shall not utterly be destroyed. For behold, thou art the fruit of my loins, and I am a descendant of Joseph who was carried captive into Egypt, and great were the covenants of the Lord which he made unto Joseph. Wherefore, Joseph truly saw our day, 
and he obtained a promise of the Lord, that out of the fruit of his loins the Lord God would raise up a righteous branch unto the house of Israel, not the Messiah, but a branch which was to be broken off, nevertheless to be remembered in the covenants of the Lord, that the Messiah should be made manifest unto them in the latter days, in the spirit of power, unto the bringing of them out of darkness unto light, yea, out of hidden darkness and out of captivity unto freedom. For Joseph truly testified, saying, A seer shall the Lord my God raise up, who shall be a choice seer unto the fruit of my loins. Yea, Joseph truly said, Thus saith the Lord unto me, A choice seer will I raise up out of the fruit of thy loins, and he shall be esteemed highly among the fruit of thy loins. And unto him will I give commandment, that he shall do a work for the fruit of thy loins his brethren, which shall be of great worth unto them, even to the bringing of them to the knowledge of the covenants which I have made with thy fathers. And I will give unto him a commandment, that he shall do none other work, save the work which I shall command him. And I will make him great in mine eyes, for he shall do my work. And he shall be great like unto Moses, whom I have said I would raise up unto you to deliver my people, O house of Israel. And Moses will I raise up to deliver thy people out of the land of Egypt. But a seer will I raise up out of the fruit of thy loins, and unto him will I give power to bring forth my word unto the seed of thy loins, and not to the bringing forth my word only, saith the Lord, but to the convincing them of my word, which shall have already gone forth among them. Wherefore, the fruit of thy loins shall write, and the fruit of the loins of Judah shall write, and that which shall be written by the fruit of thy loins, and also that which shall be written by the fruit of the loins of Judah, shall grow together under the confounding of false doctrines, and laying down of contentions, and establishing peace among the fruit of thy loins, and bringing them to the knowledge of their fathers in the latter days, and also to the knowledge of my covenant, saith the Lord. And out of weakness he shall be made strong in that day when my work shall commence among all my people, unto the restoring thee, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. And thus prophesied Joseph, saying, Behold, that seer will the Lord bless, and they that seek to destroy him shall be confounded. For this promise which I have obtained of the Lord, of the fruit of my loins, shall be fulfilled. Behold, I am sure of the fulfilling of this promise. And his name shall be called after me, and it shall be after the name of his father. And he shall be likened to me, for the thing which the Lord shall bring forth by his hand, by the power of the Lord, shall bring my people unto salvation. Yea, thus prophesied Joseph, I am sure of this thing, even as I am sure of the promise of Moses. For the Lord hath said unto me, I will preserve thy seed forever. And the Lord hath said, I will raise up a Moses, and I will give power unto him in a rod, and I will give judgment unto him in writing. Yet I will not loose his tongue, that he shall speak much, for I will not make him mighty in speaking. But I will write unto him my law by the finger of mine own hand, and I will make a spokesman for him. And the Lord said unto me also, I will raise up unto the fruit of thy loins, and I will make for him a spokesman. And I, behold, I will give unto him that he shall write the writing of the fruit of thy loins unto the fruit of thy loins, and the spokesman of thy loins shall declare it. And the words which he shall write shall be the words which are expedient in my wisdom should go forth unto the fruit of thy loins. And it shall be as if the fruit of thy loins had cried unto them from the dust, for I know their faith. And they shall cry from the dust, Yea, even repentance unto their brethren, even after many generations have gone by them. And it shall come to pass that their cry shall go, even according to the simpleness of their words. Because of their faith, their word shall proceed forth out of my mouth unto their brethren, who are of the fruit of thy loins. And the weakness of their words will I make strong in their faith, unto the remembering of my covenant which I made unto thy fathers. And now behold my son Joseph, after this manner did my father of old prophesy. Wherefore, because of this covenant thou art blessed, for thy seed shall not be destroyed, for they shall hearken unto the words of the book. And there shall rise up one mighty among them, who shall do much good, both in word and in deed, 
being an instrument in the hands of God, with exceeding faith to work mighty wonders, and do that thing which is great in the sight of God, unto the bringing to pass much restoration unto the house of Israel, and unto the seed of thy brethren. And now, blessed art thou, Joseph, behold, thou art little. Wherefore, hearken unto the words of thy brother, Nephi, and it shall be done unto thee even according to the words which I have spoken. Remember the words of thy dying father. Amen. In modern English, we would use the word descendants, not fruit of the loins, and we would say translate, not write the writing of. But the message here is clear. The latter generations of Joseph's descendants would be called to repentance many generations later by an earlier generation of his descendants by means of their writings which would be preserved and translated for them by the gift and power of God through the instrumentality of a descendant of Joseph of old who would bear his name which would be the name of his father, namely Joseph. Thus uh, it's as if they were crying unto their descendants, from the dust of the grave, crying repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the prophecy is that these descendants of the ancients to the uh, words of, of the ancients will hearken to the words of the book. Uh, indeed, as we have just heard, he says, there will arise one mighty among them who shall do much uh, good, both in word and deed, being an instrument in the hands of God and with exceeding faith to work mighty wonders and do that thing which is great in the sight of God unto bringing to pass much restoration unto the house of Israel. And the days will come, saith the Lord, that... Uh, well, let's play this next clip. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up, and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all countries whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Clearly, the work... The Lord's work is to save Israel and in the process save all those Gentiles who will repent and come unto his Son, Jesus Christ, in humility and in faith, believing that he is the creator of all there is and the Savior of all mankind, repenting of all their sins and all their dead works and so forth. He has sent his messenger from on high to declare the true points of his doctrine, to feed the world and the uh, to feed the world with the word of God after a day of famine, not of bread or thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they who come, or, and they who will not receive his word that is now hissing forth to all the earth and, uh, and repent and come unto him shall be sealed up unto the day when the wrath of God shall be poured out upon the wicked without measure. And woe unto them that fight against the work of the Lord in the church of the Lamb and spurn his doings. Woe unto them that deny Christ and his works. As the voices from the dust warn us, they shall not escape the uh, escape his judgment in this day any more than the ancients did in, in their day. And now behold, I say unto you, that when the Lord shall see fit in his wisdom that these sayings shall come unto the Gentiles according to his word, then ye may know that the covenant which the Father hath made with the children of Israel concerning their restoration to the lands of their inheritance is already beginning to be fulfilled. And ye may know that the words of the Lord which have been spoken by the holy prophets shall all be fulfilled, and ye need not say that the Lord delays his coming unto the children of Israel. And ye need not imagine in your hearts that the words which have been spoken are vain. For behold, the Lord will remember his covenant which he hath made unto his people of the house of Israel. And when ye shall see these sayings coming forth among you, then ye need not any longer spurn at the doings of the Lord. For the sword of his justice is in his right hand. And behold, at that day, if ye shall spurn at his doings, he will cause that it shall soon overtake you. 
Woe unto him that spurneth at the doings of the Lord. Yea, woe unto him that shall deny the Christ and his works. Yea, woe unto him that shall deny the revelations of the Lord, and that shall say the Lord no longer worketh by revelation or by prophecy, or by gifts or by tongues, or by healings or by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yea, and woe unto him that shall say at that day to get gain, that there can be no miracle wrought by Jesus Christ. For he that doeth this shall become like unto the son of perdition, for whom there was no mercy according to the word of Christ. Yea, and ye need not any longer hiss, nor spurn, nor make game of the Jews, nor any of the remnant of the house of Israel. For behold, the Lord remembereth his covenant unto them, and he will do unto them according to that which he hath sworn. Therefore ye need not suppose that ye can turn the right hand of the Lord unto the left, that he may not execute judgment unto the fulfilling of the covenant which he hath made unto the house of Israel. These sayings, these voices speaking to us, lo, out of the dust, have come unto the Gentiles according to his word. Therefore we know that the covenant uh, that the Lord made with his children of Israel is now being fulfilled even according as these ancient prophets have spoken. Well, uh, that's the end of the text for our um, article, The Gathering. There's so much more to say, but this this is the essence of it. Let's say good morning to Al. Good morning, Al. How are you? Good morning. I'm, I'm doing great. Uh, I'm glad to see you're awake. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I changed my routine a little bit. Oh, good. Well, uh, what do you think of this article? Oh, I like this article because it really, you know, shows that uh, that uh, we're on the right track. Number one, and uh, and. Uh, you could see what's happening in the world and why, you know, people aren't really uh, paying any attention. You know, I mean, it's all written right here, what's happening, and it's already starting with the Israelites. And every, you know, yeah, you can see that it's the vision of all, like Isaiah said, huh? Right. And it's not, you know, a lot of people think, well, you know, they're going to get raptured up and taken somewhere, but that's not the, that's not what the Lord wants. You know, it's like uh, you all have, you know. Sometimes you got to suffer a little to, you know, I mean, to get a uh, yeah. real understanding of, you know, what life's about. You know, you've got to do without a little bit. You know, and we pretty much have not have to do without. You know, and uh, you know there will come a time where we will. Or will be, yeah, I you know. I was listening. I have some really a couple of interesting things over the weekend. I uh, I found out as I came to the table a little late, but a couple of years ago, the uh, the Pope, so to speak, of the Israelites, a rabbi who was highly renowned and was, you know, like the Billy Graham, <laughs> or the, uh, to the Protestants, or 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 the Pope to uh, the Catholics. Uh, was named Kaduri, Rabbi Kaduri. And uh, he died uh, a few years back. But uh, before he died, he said he was going to leave a note that uh, would uh, reveal the name of the Messiah. And so he died, but he wasn't, he he stipulated that it couldn't be revealed for a year later. Uh, And uh, so a year later, his assistant, uh, whatever they call him, uh, that was real close to him revealed the note and the name uh, it was encoded uh, as a way that the rabbis would do things but the name it was uh, Jesus you know <laughs> so oh. <laughs> it, it sort of, that's why we never heard about it you know uh, oh, all yeah. these people who uh, the Jews you know were really upset and and uh, others but uh that's what he said. And so this guy that has written a book, the reason I found out about it is because there uh, a book and a, do- a new documentary has been has just come out on the thing and uh by you, uh, a preacher but uh with the name uh, Gallops. 
Huh? Are you running out of time? Are you running out of time? Uh, let's see. How much time do I have? Oh, goodness sakes, it's gone. <laughs> oh, it goes too fast. All right, talk to you. Talk to you tomorrow. We'll talk more about it tomorrow. I uh, hope everybody has a good day, and I pray for the Lord's choicest blessings to be upon you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.